Welcome to this Allen Talks Tech video. For further information on my technology videos, please visit my wiki at allentestwiki.pbworks.com. So how are we going to set up a lossless Ethernet environment that will enable us to transport our fiber channel over Ethernet traffic? Well, to begin with, one of the tools we can use is 802.1p an IEEE standard that defines eight different traffic classes from best effort to the highest priority for network control. The 802.1p is an extension of the IEEE 802.1q VLAN tagging standard, and they work in tandem. The 802.1q standard specifies a tag that appends to an Ethernet MAC frame. The VLAN tag has two parts, the VLAN ID, 12 bits, and prioritization, three bits. The prioritization field was not defined and used in the VLAN standard. The 802.1p defines this prioritization field. Now let's take a look at the VLAN tag and 802.1p, 802.1q in a little more detail. Here we have an example of an 802.1q tag frame for Ethernet. We begin with the preamble, followed by the start of frame delimiter, a destination address, a source address, a tagged protocol identifier, TBID. Uh, the value here, if we're running with an 802.1q um, P type of frame, is going to have a value of 8100 in hex. And then we have the tag control information. This is where the information regarding the identity of the VLAN, which is 12 bits, and the prioritization, 3 bits, is located. Let's take a look at the 802.1q field in a little bit more detail. What we're going to do is zoom in on the tag control information. This is a 2-byte field, which contains information on the unique VLAN ID, which is made up of 12 bits the canonical format indicator, which is always set to zero for Ethernet, and the three prioritization bits defined by 802.1p. Here we can have eight different values. If this field is set to zero, it's basically best effort. If it's set to 111, it's going to be the highest prioritization, typically used for network control. In between, of course, you can have the other six remaining values for prioritization. This is how we're going to prioritize our data at the MAC layer when, for example, transporting our fiber channel over Ethernet. This is also going to be used in conjunction with something which is rather new, which is priority flow control. Here we can see three examples of the MAC field. On the left, we have a basic MAC field with a destination and source address. We then have the ether type that, for example, if IPv4 data was to be encapsulated, would have the hex value 0800. If it was IPv6, the value would be 86DD. For MAC control, the value is set to hex 8808, as shown in the middle example. Here we can see the MAC control opcode is set to 0001. This indicates that this is a pause frame and that data from the far end should pause for the time indicated in the following time field. On the right, we can see an example of the MAC layer using the priority flow control 802.1QBB. As of January 2010, this is technically still a work in progress with the IEEE committee. However, it is close enough for many manufacturers to begin deploying this functionality. This gives us much more control over the data. To pause, for example, at the far end, based on its priority, indicated by 802.1p. Now we can pause up to eight different flows of data at the MAC layer based on their individual priority. For fiber channel over Ethernet, FCOE, this functionality is essential in helping to enable lossless Ethernet, which is required in a fiber channel environment. Now, let's take a closer look at how priority flow control is implemented. 
So how is Priority Flow Control, PFC, implemented? Firstly, we need to understand that the value of the pause value is not a direct unit of time, but rather a number of bits measured in quanta. In PFC, a value of one quanta is equal to 512 bits. This value would therefore indicate to the far end that transmission should pause for 512 bits. The amount of time will vary depending on the transmit clock. The faster the transmission rate, the shorter the pause. Here, for example, if we have a quanta value of 1 and we're transmitting at 10 gig, the pause time for 512 bits will effectively be 51.2 nanoseconds. So if we have quanta values of 60 and 70, the pause times will be greatly dependent on the clock rate. For 70 quanta at 10 gig, the pause would approximately be 3.58 microseconds. But at 1 gig, the same value would create a pause of over 35.8 microseconds. The class of data to be paused based on 802.1p will be indicated by the class enable vector. A value of 1 will equal a pause whatever that pause value in quanta is set for in the time field. A zero will basically disable whatever value is indicated in that time field on the corresponding class. Although specific quanta pause values can be indicated, it is possible large quanta values will be assigned and that the system will operate in a relatively simple exon exol fashion. For exon, you'll pause for whatever is indicated in the time field based on the quanta value. For exof, you'll simply set the quanta value to zero. This unpauses the far end for that specific class of traffic. By combining this new mechanism of priority flow control together with 802.1p, it is now possible to flow control and prioritize traffic at the MAC layer. This mechanism is essential for fiber channel over Ethernet, or FCOE, environments. In this example, we have two streams of traffic moving from the right. One stream is FCOE traffic, extremely high priority. The other, HTTP traffic, much lower. If we run into congestion on the left, where the buffers are approaching their maximum capacity, a pause frame is generated to hold off on the HTTP data. Once the buffers are at an acceptable capacity, an unpause, or effectively an X-off, can be sent, enabling the resumption of HTTP traffic. Although this mechanism appears to be driven by the requirements of FCOE, many other applications in the future, such as voice over IP and video, may take advantage of this new technique. Thank you for watching this Alan Talks Tech video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get more information on my technology videos with additional material, you can visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. Once again, thanks for viewing.